This is the best model I've ever seen for crash C-section. These are the folks from Operative Experience. They were kind enough to make this happen. Uh, we're not going in depth in the scenario. It's a 32-week pregnant woman who, right as she pulled up on the ramp, went into cardiac arrest. And we're here for anything you need. We'll leave it to you. Sarah, take it away. You can run the arrest at the top, Scott. All right. All right. Do whatever you need to do up top there. Well, I have two minutes to get my gear set up. <laughs> this is Brett. Brett's my sim guy. OK, so I'm palpating abdomen. I clearly have a lady in cardiac arrest, uh, palpably pregnant, right? Fund is well above the umbilicus. So I have my indication to do the procedure. Uh, and I'm going to start right at the top, up at the xiphoid. And I'm making a pretty big incision just vertically all the way down to the symphysis. I'm not a surgeon, right? Leon's a surgeon. But for me, i got to cut a few times to get through all these layers, Come especially for this lady. Okay, you can bluntly dissect as you need. Okay, and at this stage you can have your assistant retract. I've got uterus here, bladder low down, I'm making a smallish incision in my uterus. You get umbilical fluid splash out there. And I'm just putting my fingers in because I don't want to use scalpel the whole way and risk cutting baby. I'm using my fingers to protect as I'm opening up the uterus. And for me, i got to make a big incision, right? This is not cosmetic. Reaching in for baby's head. Baby is head down. That's nice. Oh my gosh. And sometimes you need some fundal pressure from the top there to help deliver baby. That's you, Brett. Your fundal pressure. The fundus is up the top. <laughs> you got it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> He's awesome. <You're> just, <laughs> right? Next step in baby, you're clamping the cord, two clamps, cut between them, right? Don't make the rookie mistake of cutting on either side. You're passing baby off to your neonatologist who's now doing the hard part, right? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you're going to breastfeed, okay? <laughs> You're, you're back at baby. You still need to deliver placenta, right? Placenta is the part of this that consumes all the oxygen. And now, if you're a surgeon, you're making the layers nice. I'm not a surgeon, so I'm packing the abdomen with sterile towels. We we'll use this because we have this. You're closing. And if I have a stapler, which Simulate. I do not, I am stapling the skin shut. Come sa. Then you're going back to mom and baby. Um, I think that deserves some applause. All right, let's step over here for one second. How, how do you feel? How'd that go? Uh, not bad. She's got a bit more adipose than I had anticipated. Uh, yeah, we didn't want to make it easy for you. No, you didn't want to make it easy. That's good. Scalpel was sharp. Uh, I didn't get cut. Brett didn't get cut. I call it a win. Now, in real life, you'd be wearing eye protection. Absolutely. Yep, we just didn't want to, you know, And, and one of those here. pretty gowns. Yes. Uh, notice I didn't want to get my clothes off. Uh, <laughs> he looks too good to get splashed. So... What, what would you have done differently, if anything, on how that just went? And folks, we're going to take you through step by step. They're resetting the mannequin as we speak. Anything you would have uh, changed? Right. So I always wish um, that I was like one of those surgeons on television who does the first perfect cut, and it's like right through the layers the way they want it, and you could see uterus right there. You, I, you look like you want to say something about I that. Tell I, me. I wish I could be that surgeon, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I want to be that person. The fact of the matter is I'm, I'm not. I'm not a surgeon. Uh, if I'm doing a cut, it's not going to be the prettiest cut. I'm sure Leon, Leon can make it look a lot nicer than I can. Uh, but I'm going to have to go a few times to get through the layers, and probably I have to make a bigger incision than a surgeon who does this all the time. Well, Leon, would, is that the case? Would you make a smaller incision, or would you go all the way? Full disclosure, I've never seen Dr. Gray do this. I could not have done that any quicker or any better. That was fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. So you, you would make full incision, even Absolutely. though you had the skills to the only thing, go smaller. I don't think it's a matter of skill. I think you slow down once you don't get your exposure, and exposure is everything. From xiphoid to pubis, it's probably in real life four or five incisions. Don't worry mentally about hitting bowel. If you do, we'll fix it later, and it's probably out of the way Wait, can you anyway. repeat that? Because I think that's a major fear here. <laughs> yeah, look. And I need someone to record just this moment so I yeah. can play it forever. <laughs> the uterus uh, moves all of the intestines out of the way, Maybe you might nick some 
transverse colon, maybe if they had an adhesion, there'd be a piece of bowel there. That's fine, we can fix it later. None, none of that is life-threatening in the immediate moment. The only thing I would say at the end is I wouldn't close with staples. I'd either throw a few stitches or put towel clamps because the staples don't hold very well and it's gonna take you a lot of time. You have to get to the baby, airway, thoracotomy, I don't know. Staples are, are actually really hard to do, so I wouldn't even close, I'd just put some towel clamps or a few stitches. Do we have to do anything? Could you just leave them open for the rest of the arrest? That's what I would do. Yeah, okay, fantastic. All right, and, and how far out are we from uh, being able to come over? Okay. We're, we're putting in the, the second baby so we can do it again slow. Yep. So tell us about the umbilicus. Is this something we need to care about? Um, it's funny. When I do laparotomies that are super quick, um, in the operating room, the umbilicus can really be tricky. Um, so if I was in a crash situation in the trauma bay, I just wouldn't worry about it. In a gravid female, that the umbilical stump is often very attenuated. So go around it, go through it. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. Don't spend another neuron for the rest of your life on it. Just straight cut. All right, fantastic. Now, Sarah, you had an amazing lecture on all the background of this, the evidence and such, and people can find that. It's up on the SMAC site. But let's just go through one thing here that I don't... I, I think the savvy people in the audience know this, but let's make absolutely sure everyone does. You're not even necessarily doing this for the baby. Who are you really doing this for? Right, so the key here is to remember that resuscitative hysterotomy saves the mom, right? That's why we call it resuscitative. And so it helps in a few different ways. Uh, one, it's gonna relieve aortocaval compression. That's important. You're gonna get better preload back to the mom. Two, once baby's out, you get way better uh, diaphragmatic motion. It's easier to oxygenate and ventilate these patients if you have a primary oxygenation problem because their mechanics get so much easier. Three, placenta is a huge oxygen sucker, right? When you've delivered baby and placenta, all of a sudden you've got way more circulating oxygen to perfuse the mom. So there are three different reasons from physiology why this is helpful in getting mom back from the cardiac arrest. Uh, and the data is you want to do it as fast as possible. Now, on that timing issue, because this is the other major question, then we'll be ready to go step by step. Uh, there's these numbers bandied around. I heard five minutes. That seems to not be true anymore. How long into an arrest would you say this is not worth it? Or is there any period of time? Yeah, so it's a good question. The, the whole four-minute rule, five-minute rule uh, is a myth, right? There isn't data for that. It just became a thing that got propagated in guidelines over and over. So certainly you want to do it sooner rather than later, but there are reports of maternal survival out to 15 minutes and fetal survival out to 30 minutes, right? Like you have a while. So if six or seven minutes have gone by, you don't wash your hands of this procedure and say you're not gonna go, like, go for it because it's too late. You wanna do it. But you also need to remember that four minutes is not a long time in your arrest. Assuming this lady drops right in front of you, that's only a couple cycles for you to get mentally ready, get your gear ready, and get ready to go. And if she's dropped in the field, they've probably used the four minutes up before they've even got to you. So you wanna be ready to go as soon as they hit the door. All right, we are ready to go. Now, I've never done this, so I'm gonna stay out of this step by step. Leon, Sarah, take you us wanna through You wanna do this. it? Oh, God, no. I'll teach you. All right, fine. fine. Yeah. OK, let's go. All right, Leon, come in here, man. you got to give me peer support. If I, can teach my, uh, if I can teach my daughter, I can teach Weingart. All right. All right. We, d we do sim practice at home. My house is a weird place to live. <laughs> it really is, man. My kids think I'm a maniac. OK. What should I do? Step one, you want to palpate, make sure this is actually pregnancy, not ascites. Mm, I can't tell the difference. All looks the same to me. All looks the same to you? You can probably feel a uterus, yes? I'm believing. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Okay. Yeah, there's a, there is a uterus here. And in general, uterus, uterus above umbilicus is your indication to go. Okay. Okay? Fine. Good. Take a breath. Say something positive. Say your trigger word. Smooth. Smooth. I like smooth. It's a good one. Pick up your scalpel. You're ready, yeah? Okay. Starting from the very top, starting from the xiphoid, all the way down to the symphysis pubis. Linear vertical incision, don't worry about the umbilicus, just go on through. And you're looking, you're going to have to go through a bunch of layers. You're in subcutaneous fat, what I believe, help me Brett, is subcutaneous <laughs> fat? That is absolutely true. Thank you. Good. Keep going. And if you have helpers, which hopefully you do, they are retracting for you from the top, giving you better exposure, better visualization. They right? have to pull really hard. They have to pull hard, so really hard, hard sometimes okay. the whole model moves. 
I am through. Okay. Uterus here. Bowel is going to be up top. Bladder's down at the bottom. And now is this, Leon, Sarah, is this going to be pretty much the situation in a really gravid patient that all the bowel is pretty much gone? Yeah. It's, it's pretty much all uterus here? Yeah. yeah. Well, that should reassure you that this is probably not going to be that tough. Right? It's going to be right there for you. <laughs> it's a walk in the park, man. It's a walk in the park. Okay. Small incision into the uterus. Because there... my fear here, right, is stabbing the baby. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Yeah. They got enough problems. All right, so yeah. which, uh, which part of the uterus do I go for? So for, for me, I go low down so I can stick my fingers up and cut up with the scissors because I'm a righty and I find it easier to cut that way. If you start at the top and as a righty you're trying to cut down, I just find it awkward. And now what is the normal lie of a baby? Is their head usually up here? Hopefully. So breach if the head's up here, hopefully their head's right down. Okay, then. So I'm going right for the head. The uterus is also <laughs> much The skull, here. man. It's thick. It's thick. It's strong. All right. And uh, am I going vertical or horizontal? Here? I do a vertical, and you want to end up with a long vertical incision, pretty much the length of your whole exposure, right? This is not a small little thing. You want to be able to get that baby out. Are you the same, Leon? Vertical? I think anyone doing this procedure crash should do it vertically. That's different than what I would do. It's much safer vertically and easier. All right. And just midline? Midline. I wish there was some landmark. That would be nice, but no. Okay. Find the middle. Uh, I, there's, a, there's, a flow, there's a flow of some urine-type liquid here. This What's is the? good. It's oh. amniotic fluid. Okay, okay. Now, you need a hole big enough to stick your fingers in and scissors. I don't know if you've Multiple got it there, but... Multiple fingers or is one finger Well, at enough? least one, and then the scissors beside you. All right, my finger's good. Okay, grab your scissors. Yes? Put a finger in to protect baby. Oh, all right. See, you, you're working with me here, right? Yep, yep. Don't stab baby. And extend your incision. Long vertical incision. You got it. Yeah, keep coming with the finger, right? Baby's oh, still yeah. there. Yeah, right. keep coming. Good. There it is. Okay. Okay, bit bigger, I think, or you're gonna yeah. get yeah, you're gonna have a hard time. Bigger top and bottom. Okay. Okay, I like it. Reach in and find the head. I got a head. Okay, deliver the head. Now it's hard to get out. Is there any tricks right now? So fundal pressure from the top will help you deliver baby. All right. Uh, mm. Extending your excision incision could help you deliver baby. See if I can. It's usually certainly wet enough from amniotic okay. fluid. Good. That and plastic, uh, that's. Uh, I think it's good. even easier in real life. I Got think it. so too. All right, now, is there any particular way I grab or I just pull and pray? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do, do you have a specific prayer you use at this stage? You can teach me something. <laughs> do you say your Hail Marys? <laughs> uh, no cerebral palsy, please. <laughs> so. <laughs> Okay, that, that's a worthwhile prayer. I like it. It's, it's pragmatic. So for me, I'm grabbing around the back of the neck and pulling fairly gently. Not a lot of twisting on the gentle neck. I'm right? glad the, the gently was... <laughs> gently. Fairly it's a, gently. Right. It's a baby. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's it. All right. Right out. Some, All right. Somewhere flat onto the bed. Because the last thing you want to do is drop baby at this stage, right? You just got all these style points for the delivery. No dropping baby. <laughs> all okay. right. Now, is there any particular place I clamp or pretty much it doesn't matter? I don't think it matters. Do we doesn't have an OB-GYN in the, in the crowd who can answer that for me? I go fairly close to the umbilicus. All right. Yep. Yeah. And then cut between the two clamps. Lovely. Hand that off to your neonatal team. Good. If you're very blessed, you have a neonatal team. If not, you have your second eMERGE doc who now has a baby. What now? Okay, you gotta get the placenta out, okay. right? Placenta is still consuming all that oxygen. We gotta deliver that. And I just reach my hand in. You reach your hand in, palpate, gentle traction to pull it out. Sometimes it helps if you have a pack to help you pull it out. To Do get you put, you, so you put the pack behind? I put it in my hand and I wipe with it. Yeah. Okay. You'll find stuff slips with your gloves and wet stuff. I got it. Yeah, okay. it is slippery. And now, does this come out easily, or yeah, yeah? yeah. So it's, yeah. You, you don't have to use a lot of force here. No, the and, baby is and harder you to get basically out. Basically, just you know, hold down here and yank, right? Yeah, no, no <laughs> water skiing on the cord. Okay, fair enough. That's not good. I'm just, I'm just asking what's in your minds right now. All right. <laughs> is that weird for you that he's in your minds? <laughs> Okay. okay, getting placenta, you want that out, you want cord to come out. You have a quick look, make sure it's intact and that you have all of it, right? Now, how would I know? Because this is looking kind of brain-like. Uh, <laughs> is that what your brain looks like? <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's weird. <laughs> all right, so... Right, intact, no chunks missing off of it. Okay. Okay, that's out. So, and now, someone is going to go back and check my work later on. Yes. So, so I, I don't have to be all that concerned, And right? they're going to give you a grade. Well, we have to close the uterus. Yeah. Well, we're going to close the uterus? Well, no. I mean, you would, but Hopefully. I think 
in yeah. our world, right? We probably but would. we're not. Yeah, I, I'm no. not. I'm not doing that. Just pack no. it. Yeah. 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 Uh, if, if I've survived this part, now it's change of pants. So. Um, <laughs> yes. Okay, so a little uterine massage, right? Start the contractions going so you can actually reach in manually. Inside? Inside, yeah, where the uterus is. No, 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 like on the outside of your oh, uterus. Oh, see, here. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so yeah. Outside the uterus. Outside the uterus. Just kind of scrunching that Little gentle around. contraction, yeah. I don't know if that works or not, but it's in all the papers of how to do this. Okay. Okay. All right, I've done that. I, do you feel relaxed? Okay. Contracted is what you wanted. In fact, you wanted a little stressed, and I now, think. That's fair. All yeah. right, now if you, wanted, if you were going to pack, how, yeah. how, many of, uh, how many surgical towels would you put in there? So I'm going to pack it until it seems full. And you're, so you're packing inside the uterus or outside the uterus? So for me, Leon, both. help me here. I would do I, both. You would do both, right do inside both. the uterus too? So okay. I just kind of squish the edges together and pack on top. But no, I should pack inside too. I don't know if there's evidence one way or the other. I'm just saying in this situation, I'm sure it's oozy. I'm sure the patient's coagulopathic. I would just pack both. Okay, right. I like it. And packing, then, close. And now you're saying the easiest way would just be putting some uh, Towel intestinal clips. clamps? Yes. Okay. And if those are in your kit, and if they're not, and you um, had to, you big stitches or staples. And you say you were what, saying staples would, I do? would be harder just because you have to. This is what I would do. Do so many. Done. Okay. I like that. <laughs> but but not up here yet, right? No. Not okay. up here yet. I'm still doing. Do you guys realize I was doing CPR through all of that? <laughs> right. As this is going on, somebody is still. So that's key. Going so for remember, we have to go back in. Right. If the patient survives. So staples and th I, so this is, this is fine. All right. I like this. This makes it easy. Yeah. And now in your lecture, you talked about the, the three team approach. You just want to yeah. delineate those three teams. Sure. So if you're running a maternal cardiac arrest, you need somebody, one team, ideally, who's on the maternal arrest. They're doing ACLS. They're doing airway. They're running everything for mom at the top. You have one team on your C-section. Right, because it's really helpful to have one person doing it plus a helper who can retract for you or give that fundal pressure. Your third team is your neonatal resuscitation team. Right, you want an RT there, you want some, somebody who knows something about babies. Ideally, you want a warmer and some nice baby resuscitation gear. So three teams, one for mom, one for baby, one for the operation. Now, Leon, what do you have to add as a surgeon? And the reason we brought Leon up here is he's done countless C-sections in the course of aid work in addition to being a trauma surgeon. So his mind kind of works like our mind in terms of resuscitation. What other tips and tricks do you have for us, brother? I just think in the setting of blunt pelvic or abdominal trauma or penetrating trauma, you have to be mentally prepared for blood that's coming from other places in the, in the perineum. And when you do a laparotomy, this was great, but it didn't show how blood can whoosh out in front of you. So if blood's whooshing out in front of you, still get to the baby, do everything that Scott and Dr. Gray did. But after you do all of that, you can additionally pack the rest of the abdomen, just forcefully pack the four quadrants, get packing, pretend this is packing, quadrant, quadrant, yes, and then, <laughs> you know, yeah. Baby's and then, still doing fine. Yeah, and just put something over, one stitch, whatever. The patient needs, needs the operating room. They're not going to survive. Fantastic. All awesome. Right. I cannot thank you two enough, and a uh, round of applause for Leon. You'll see him shortly. <laughs> round of applause for Sarah. She's going to be lecturing throughout the day.